Welcome back to the channel. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment, and in today's video, I'm going to be making custom ice cube molds. Let's get into it. Before I get this video started, I want to give a huge shout out to Liquor Lineup here in Las Vegas, who has made this video possible. So they actually provided two different liquors for me to use in this video. So the first one is Hobby Nobby, which is one of their signature barrels that they had done for them. And then there's also a Jefferson Ocean, also a single barrel that they had done for them. Both of these are ones that you can only get at Liquor Lineup. So be sure to check them out. I'll leave their links in the description below. So my hope in this project is to be able to make my own custom designed ice cubes that I can then use for my own drinks. And I thought it would be cool to do a couple of logo designs to try and see if one, I can actually make them into an ice cube mold and two, to see how they come out. So I've never actually worked with silicone before. This is going to be a brand new thing for me. And for this project, I'm going to be using Smooth Sil 940, which is a food grade silicone. So that means that I can use it for ice cubes or chocolate or pretty much anything that is going to be considered edible. So the first step to this is going to be laser cutting out the ice cube designs, and then I'm going to make a mold out of that design. So first up, let's go over to the computer. I'll show you what those designs look like, and then we will laser cut them out. All right, so first up here, I have the designs that I want to use. So these top two are actually the liquor lineup logos that I'm going to be attempting to make into the ice cube shapes. So we have the lineup of bottles as well as the LL. And then on the bottom here, I have my own logo, which I've modified quite a bit because some parts of my logo are really small. So I've tried to link everything together into one single piece that can come out together. And then I have a design that I used to make keychains out of that just says maker that I think will go with it well. So these are the four designs that I want to create. So in order to make the mold, I actually need to make the shape that I want to have as the ice cube. So for that, I'm going to be attempting to use half inch thick acrylic. The goal here is to laser cut the pieces out of the half inch acrylic be able to put them into a box that I'm going to make and cast them into the mold. Half inch acrylic is actually more than what the 60 watt machine is rated to do on a normal day basis. It is pushing the limits of the machine, but I'm going to attempt to cut it anyway and see what happens. So I have this piece of scrap half inch acrylic. I'm gonna throw this in the machine, send the design over and see if it cuts through. All right, so the first couple of tests have failed and I kind of knew that this would happen, but I wanted to push the limits anyway. So the machine did cut through the half inch acrylic. So on test one, I didn't actually slow it down enough. So it had to take two passes to do it, but in the process, it actually melted the sides and you can see that features are missing. And this is going to happen anyway because I'm using a two inch lens. I really should be using a four inch lens. I just don't have one yet. Uh, it's actually currently in the mail. I just haven't received it. So you'll see that on these, there's a huge taper that occurs when trying to cut and it ended up melting just too much away for this to be usable in the mold. It won't give enough features and it just won't look good. So I tried to test it again and I put in a better speed so it could cut through in one pass, but I still had a similar effect. So you will see that it didn't quite cut through some of the features. I did change the focus on these so that 
I was cutting a little bit further down. It could cut through better, but you can still see the taper. You can still see missing features and the other one as well. Uh, it just spends too long on it and it ends up just melting it away and getting rid of the features. This is why you really need like 80 watts or above to cut half inch acrylic. With the four inch lens, I might stand a better chance, but I just don't have that lens yet. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board. Instead of using half inch acrylic, I'm going to be using some scrap quarter inch acrylic and just stacking the pieces together with some sign tape so that they stick together. So I'm going to go back and cut them again, but out of quarter inch acrylic this time, the only difference is I'm going to be using two layers instead of one single piece. So I actually have a piece of scrap acrylic here that is matte black. The color doesn't really matter. It's just scrap and it already has some of the sign tape on here. So this will work out well because I can also stick this to the bottom of the mold to have it stay in place instead of using like hot glue. So I'm going to put this in the machine, cut the pieces out. I'm going to cut two of each piece and then I will put them together. Since the half inch acrylic was kind of a fail, I am using quarter inch acrylic and I was starting to stack them up and noticed that two layers at basically half an inch just wasn't giving me that depth that I was hoping for. So I decided to cut a third layer. So each one is going to be about three quarters of an inch thick. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and stick the layers together and get these pieces set. And then we'll go ahead and make the mold casing or the box around them. But let's go ahead and stick these together first. So this part's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to peel off the covering that comes on it. So I'm gonna do that on each of the layers. And if this doesn't sound satisfying, that might be the best part of using acrylic. So now I'm going to go ahead and peel the adhesive cover off and I'm going to stick these two layers together. I do need to try to be as close to exact as possible. Okay. So now it's a half of an inch thick and now I need to add the last one to the top. So go ahead and do that. Again, just be careful to line everything up. And when we stick this to the bottom of the mold, we'll peel off this bottom one. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and stack the rest of them real quick and be back in just a minute. All right, so a little bit of a change in plans. The parts that were these shapes that were black actually didn't have adhesive on the back and I didn't pay attention to that. So I recut them out of blue, which is why the color on these two changed. But now I have all four ice cube shapes that I want to use. So first up I have the bottles, then I have the maker, the liquor lineup logo, and then my own logo. So all of these are going to be about three quarters of an inch thick to give the ice cube some more depth. So hopefully this will work. And now that I have these, I need to go ahead and design the box that is going to hold them for the mold. So let's go over to the computer and design the box. To design the mold, I actually just use a simple box generator. So I go to makercase.com, click on the basic box, in this case, I'm going to use inches. The width and the depth are actually going to be my longer dimensions. The height is going to be my shorter. So in this case, I'm going to make my width 3.5. I'm going to make my height one inch, and I'm going to make my depth about 2.5. And these are going to be inside dimensions. So the inside of this should be those dimensions. I'm going to make it out of quarter inch 
And I'm actually going to change this to a custom thickness of 0.22 because I've measured my material. I want it to be open, meaning there's no lid. And I'm going to be using finger joints to help it stay together. So right now, this is the generic shape of what I want. From here, I'm going to hit download box plans. And I get rid of the labels because I don't really need them. Underneath of the kerf and corner compensation, I do actually want to account for the kerf. And I want to make this half of the beam diameter. Now, this is somewhat subjective depending on your laser, uh, but I'm going to make mine 0 0.002. You'll see that it doesn't make it very drastic, but it will be enough that this should be more of a friction fit and it should stick together without any kind of glue. And the purpose of that is so that I can take the walls apart once it's done and be able to demold it more easily. At least that's the thought. So I'm going to go ahead and download the SVG, open up Adobe Illustrator, and open that box file. And this is what it's going to look like. So I'm going to change the line weight to be 0.5 just so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on and I'm going to copy this and send it over to the file that I was using earlier and I'm just going to paste it here and then just ungroup them and I'm going to drag some of them up a little bit higher and now I'm going to send this over to the laser. Now you could go through and line these up and try to reduce cutting paths, uh, but that can work against you from a kerf standpoint. So I'm just going to leave it like this and I'm going to send it over to the laser and cut it out and we'll test this out and make sure that it fits. So here I have my piece of scrap acrylic. It's just some translucent acrylic that I've had for a while. I'm going to send over that box generated file and cut the quarter inch acrylic. So it's gonna be about 100% power, 100% frequency, and I think 8% speed. So I'm going to put this in the laser and cut it out. Okay, now that I have the pieces cut, I'm just going to peel off the masking from all of them, which again, this noise. So satisfying. But I'm going to peel all of these real quick and just like magic, they're done. So now what I wanna do is I'm just going to test fit these. So I'm just lining them up. They're a little looser than I usually want, but they do go together fairly easily and they do stick together so they're not falling apart which is what i wanted so i'm going to go and put all the walls together so this is what i wanted so if i'm holding it by one area it's not falling apart which is great now there are a couple of little gaps in between the seams that I want to, I'm probably actually going to put masking tape or painter's tape on the bottom of this just to try and seal it up so that silicone doesn't leak underneath. But the intent is that at the end of this, I can remove the walls from the sides like this, and then I can demold it more easily. So with that in mind, if I take my pieces and I just dry fit them into here, it is going to be a tight spacing because I don't know how much silicone it's going to take up, but they should work, hopefully. So the first thing I wanna do from here is actually attach these pieces to the bottom plate so that they don't move when I go to cast this. So I'm just going to peel this off. And we're going to stick it 
to the bottom here. And hopefully that will work. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. Just kind of place it where I think it'll work and press it down. So now I have these pieces stuck to the bottom so they can't go anywhere when I am casting. I'm actually going to put tape around here so that nothing can leak out. I'm gonna use painter's tape on all of the joints just to make sure nothing leaks out. This may not work, but we'll find out. All right, now this is going to be the casting mold for the first ice cube mold. So hopefully this will work. But let me go ahead and I've already cut another one that's actually just slightly smaller for the other designs. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this one up too. All right, here are the final molds that I'm going to be using for the silicone. So it does have blue painter's tape pretty much all the way around. Now I know that this probably isn't the best way to do this. I'm just using what I have on hand without trying to go out and buy anything extra. So I'm using acrylic, which I've heard silicone doesn't stick to that well. So hopefully this will work okay. Uh, but we'll find out as we go along. So next I need to grab the smooth on kit and we'll figure out how to mix this up and pour it into the molds. Now that I've got the molds ready, I'm going to be using the Smooth On Smooth Cell 940, and I need to actually figure out how much I need to make in order to fill these molds. So I'm going to put a link in the description to the calculator that I use from their website. Uh, but what you're gonna need is the cubic volume of the mold the cubic volume of your pieces inside of the mold, and that will tell you how much you're going to need to make. I'm gonna grab these measurements and show you how to use the calculator. So here at the calculator, this is a pour-on liquid, so it's going to be a pour-on mold estimator. Uh, the product for me is going to be the Smooth Sill 940. My model volume, which is the volume of my shapes, so each one is about uh, two square inches, so two by two, and they're about 0.37, or about three quarters of an inch tall, so 0.75. So each piece is about three cubic inches. Now I need to multiply this number by two, and this gives me the total volume in cubic inches of my items in each mold. So roughly six cubic inches of model. For the mold, my mold is about 3.5 by 2.5 by one inch. So that's going to give me 8.75. So I'm gonna plug in six for the model, 8.75 for the mold box. And then you can get it as pounds, ounces, or grams. I do have a scale that I'm going to use that I can use the grams on. So I'm gonna hit calculate. So I'm gonna need about 53.3 grams of the mixture. So this is going to be a 10 to 100 mixture. So for every 100 grams, I need 10 grams. So in this case, because I'm making two molds, I need about 106 grams of the actual mold mixture. So that's gonna be, you know, roughly, I'm gonna put about 100 of the part A and then about 10 grams of part B to give me that 100 to 10 ratio. Now that I know this, I can go ahead and measure everything out and start mixing it up. So for this part of the project, I'm going to need the smooth cell kits. So if I open this up, it comes with a part A and a smaller part B that looks like this. So I'm going to need those as well as a scale that I can measure everything out on. I'm also going to need a cup for the part B, a cup for part A, so I can mix these two together. And then I need a second mixing cup because what I'm gonna do is mix them together in this first one. And because stuff gets trapped down in the bottom, I'm going to then pour it into the second mixing cup. 
Okay, so the first thing I need to do is actually mix this up. So this one you have to shake and this one you have to stir. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix these up real quick before we uh, measure them. But this one, just gotta take off the top. And it looks like this. So I'm just using these, basically a tongue depressor to mix it all up. You can see it is pretty thick. And the tongue depressor may not actually be um, stiff enough to do this, but you wanna mix it up as best you can. So go ahead and mix those up and then we will measure everything out. All right, now that everything is mixed, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the scale and I wanna set this to grams. So as you can see here, I'm going to put my empty cup on there and zero it out. Okay. Okay, so now that it's zeroed out, I can actually dispense stuff into it. So I'm going to take about 100 grams of part A. And I don't know how much this is gonna be, so I'm just gonna kinda slowly let it mix in. So I'm a little bit over. So I'm just gonna try to take a little bit out until I get to about 100. That's probably close enough. So, that one's 106. I'm going to now do the same thing for the part B. So this one needs to be, since that one was 106, this one needs to be about 10, maybe 11. So I'm going to slowly pour this in. I think my scale is slightly off, but I think it's close. So what I'm gonna do is mix these two together and start stirring. So I'm gonna use the tongue depressor I had before, start stirring it up, try to get it all together. And it should turn a pinkish color, which it is. So that's a good sign. Now, again, I'm no mold making expert, so this could go completely wrong when I go to put it all into the mold. So now that I got it pretty well mixed, I'm actually going to, I'm gonna seal this up, and I'm actually going to pour that into the other mixing bowl and try to mix it as it's going in. So keep in mind that while you're doing this, you only have about 30 minutes to work with it once you put the two together. So that time started as soon as I started mixing the two. So just keep that in mind as you're going through this. If you're crunched on time, um, may not be the best idea to start out. Unless you have uh, the time to dedicate to it right away. Now I don't have a cure pot or a vacuum uh, pressure pot or anything else. So I'm just gonna be pouring it into the mold. So as I'm going through this, I'm just gonna try to keep it high up. You can see bubbles are starting to kind of form anyway, but I'm gonna try to keep it high in the air and let it kind of just go down in a single little piece like this and just kind of travel along everything. And hopefully it won't form too many bubbles. So it is starting to coat it. I may have miscalculated the volume of my mold, but this may only be enough for one. So I did miscalculate the amount that I need uh, by half, apparently. So keep that in mind as you're doing this. 
So I'm just gonna kind of bang it on the table in hopes that I can get it more level. There are some bubbles on the surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this one kind of sit. And this needs to sit for 24 hours. So this is gonna be an interesting test. And while that's actually going, I'm gonna mix the other one while I'm doing this um, to hopefully get a better measurement this time. This one's starting to look a little bit better. So I did a terrible job at estimating my model volume because I kind of measured it based off the largest one. And I really should have done it based off the smaller one. So that was a dumb mistake. Okay. While this one is still here, I'm going to try to add in this extra silicone. It's kind of messy. Or I'm just messy, one of the two. All right, <clears throat> so I'm going to shake these again. The second one definitely poured a little bit easier than the first. Granted, I also used I also used this first one as a practice, uh, so it's probably gonna have a lot of bubbles. But you know, that's what experimentation is for. What I'm gonna do <laughs> is I'm gonna let these sit for 24 hours because that's the cure time on this. Uh, so I'm going to let them sit, see how they turn out, and hopefully, fingers crossed, everything comes out okay. Uh, if not, then, well, it'll be a spectacular fail. So let's fast forward to 24 hours from now. It has now been 24 hours since I poured these molds, and I'm a little terrified <laughs> of taking them apart. But... I am just kind of feeling it and it does feel like it cured at least. So we're going to try to take these apart uh, and see if it worked. So my first concern is that the silicone will stick to the acrylic. And then if it doesn't stick, just being able to demold it from the shapes. I don't know what's going to happen, but let's go ahead and try. All right, so I'm going to start out with this one, which you can see my logo in, because if something's screwed up, I'd rather do it on the one that is not for liquor lineup. All right, so I do see a few places where silicone came through, and I can kind of separate. Oh, there we go. So one wall, Let's see if I can get this wall off. Oh good, okay, so it did release, good news. So there is the nice pink mold. So I kind of thought that these would come off. Now the question is, will it come off of here? And that's, you know, that's gonna, be, that's the, really the test here. So I'm just working my way around the bottom, trying to loosen it all up here, then, Oh, well, good news and bad news. Um, good news is I got the base off. Bad news is uh, it kind of brought stuff with it. So let's see if we can work this part out of here. Start with the maker one. It looks like it might be a little bit easier. 
So out of the two molds, this is by far the more complex one. Good news is at least one part is intact. So the maker one did work. Now, whether it'll stay together, I don't know. You can, the interesting part is because I stacked the acrylic, you can kind of see the, which it might be hard to pick up on camera, but you can actually see the layers because they were kind of mismatched in there. Yes. Okay. You know what? I'm happy with that. It, it wasn't perfect. It definitely did not come out uh, perfect. But here's the first mold. The real test is the liquor lineup one. Because they're, they sponsored the video. So <laughs> let's hope that theirs came out okay. Which, by the way, again, if you didn't see it yet, this is the first uh, whiskey bourbon that they gave me for the video, Jefferson Oceans. This is a barrel that they could only actually get, or a bottle you can only get from the single barrel that was sent. And then this one's actually from Knob Creek that they relabeled as Hobby Knobby. Uh, you can see here it says bottle 167 of 174. So if you're looking for an exclusive bottle that you can only get here in the liquor lineup store, those are two really good options. So this, this is really just test one. So test one is, will the mold actually come out the way it's intended? The second test is, will I be able to make an ice cube with it? So, oh, well, same thing as the last one, it let loose from here. Really only needed to work the one time anyway. Aha, okay. One down, and you can see the nice little bottle logo thing going on. And then, so far, so good. All right, here's the troublesome part. This little part inside of the L's. Come on. There. You know what? I'll take it. So hopefully once ice cubes are coming out of here, they'll be... Uh, good to go. What I'm going to do is clean these up, trim off all the flashing. I'm going to rinse them out so that I can actually start using them and then fill them with water. And we are going to try to make some ice cubes. So uh, let's fast forward to cleaned up versions of the molds. Now they're all cleaned up. What I'm going to do is pour some water into them. And hopefully these will turn into ice cubes. The coolest part about this is that because the design is all linked together. So let's pop these in the freezer and put them in the freezer, put them in the old ice cube chest area so that it can lay nice and flat and hopefully They'll turn into ice cubes. I let the mold sit overnight in the freezer. So now it's time to take them out and see if this will work or not. So I have a feeling that it's gonna be a little bit difficult to demold some of the designs, but let's check them out, see what happens. All right, so here are the molds. Try to get a close up here. I did pour the water a little too high, but here's my guess. My guess is the block of bottles is going to come out okay. The other ones are all a little bit suspect because there are some really small spots, especially right here and in the other design pretty much everywhere. So what I'm going to try to do is just loosen it up gently and try to just work the cube out. Aha, there we go. Success. There are a bunch of bottles. Yes, it's not crystal clear, but it goes perfect in my glass for my scotch. So 
There's one. And now the real test. Oh, I already broke it. <laughs> okay, so. Well, you could hurt it. The good news is it still made an ice cube. Bad news is the ice cube went into pieces. So there's one part of the L. Put that in the glass. So another part of the L. And the last little part. So this one I'll call the bottles of success. And I'm gonna say that this one's half successful. It did cast an ice cube, I just broke it. Now, this one, I think I'm gonna break all of it based off of what happened on this one. So, I'm going to try to do this slowly. Maybe if I heated up the back with hot water, it would help, but... Well, there's part of the M. It, so I, I already know what the problem is. But you know what? I'm pretty proud of myself here. Cause these turned out a lot better than I expected. Especially this one, because I got the A, the K, the E, and the R. And if this, turn this up a little bit. Okay. So I have the A, the K, the E, and the R. Again, not crystal clear, but it made an ice cube. Well, I'll call it a half success. I have a part of a gear and I have a part of my logo. So I'm gonna save that part because it didn't hit the workbench. Uh, but the rest is gonna go melt over on the floor. But overall, they did work as ice cubes. Okay, here are my thoughts. So they did work. They did make ice cubes. Honestly, I'm just impressed by that. I didn't think that I'd get it to work the first time. Uh, this is the first time I've ever used a silicone kit at all. So the fact that I mixed it right, the fact that it actually cured correctly and the amount of time it needed, and the fact that it actually worked to cast something, to be honest, that was above my expectations. I was wondering if I'd even be able to make the mold. So that part did work. And as I showed you before, here's a close up of the one with my logo and the maker text. And then here's the one with the liquor lineup logos. Now there's a couple of things I think that I would change if I were to do this again. One is that if it's solid like this, it's fine. Even at the three quarter inch depth, it worked because it's a solid block of ice, just like an ice cube. So that one, I kind of expected to work. Now the logos and the designs with all of the text and the pieces on the inside, a couple of things I think I would change. So one is if I kept the design as is with as much complexity as it has, what I think I would do is actually put two layers or half of an inch of the design itself and then maybe the last quarter of an inch as just a backer that's completely flat and solid. I think that would give it a nice base that it could work with. Yes, it would take away from the see-through details, but it would be robust enough that I think it would survive. Another option for that would be to, instead of making it three quarters of an inch thick, I can make them thinner. I can make them a quarter of an inch. That way they don't have to demold as far. Um, now your ice cube would be a lot thinner and that may not be great for cocktails or anything like that, but it may give me the detail that I want. Eventually I wanna try this again uh, with that experimentation and see what works. And with that in mind, I've actually had the Hobby Nobby one already in the store. So I'm really curious to try the Jefferson Ocean one. So I'm going to pour myself a glass of this and just relax the rest of the night. Let's try it out.
Hopefully you've enjoyed this project. It's been a lot of fun learning and trying to make it, even with the hiccups along the road. But again, huge shout out to Liquor Lineup for sponsoring this video. Be sure to go check them out online. Again, I will leave their links in the description below. And if you liked the video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I try to come out with new videos as often as I can and come out with new projects as often as I can. If you have ideas for projects, leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to get to them. But I want to thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.